Hey everyone, today we're going to take a trip to Ottawa to learn more about the Ottawa Rules for Lower Extremity X-rays. The Ottawa Rules are good because they give you an evidence-based way to decide if your patient needs an X-ray. We're going to start with the Ottawa Foot Rule. So if your patient comes in and they have pain in their midfoot, plus one of the following, bone tenderness at the base of the fifth metatarsal, labeled as figure C in the lateral view, bone tenderness at the navicular bone, labeled as figure D in the medial view, or can't bear weight immediately after the injury and in the ED for four steps. So if they have pain in the midfoot in any one of those, they're going to get an x-ray of their foot. Moving on to the Ottawa ankle rule, one that I think comes up pretty often in test questions and I think a lot of people are familiar with from clinical practice also. So this one is similar, except it's going to be pain in the malleolar area plus one of the following. Bone tenderness along the distal six centimeters of the posterior edge of the tibia or the tip of the medial malleolus, shown as the uh, label B in the medial view. Or bone tenderness along the distal six centimeters of the posterior edge of the fibula on the tip of the lateral malleolus, shown as A in the lateral view. And similarly to uh, the Ottawa foot rule, if they can't bear weight immediately after the injury and in the ED for four steps, this also gets you a positive. So if they have pain, the malleolar area plus one of those, they're going to get an ankle series. And finally, the Ottawa knee rule. Here, they're going to have a knee injury plus one of the following. This one is a little bit different because it includes an age category. So if they're greater than or equal to 55 years of age, they automatically get an x-ray series of their knee. If they have isolated patellar tenderness or isolated tenderness at the head of the fibula. This is also a positive. If they can't flex their knee to 90 degrees and similar to uh, both the rules before, if they can't bear weight immediately after the injury and in the ED for four steps, you're getting a knee series. The real strength of the Ottawa rules is that they provide an evidence-based approach to how you work up lower extremity injuries. So uh, it would only be fitting to conclude this by talking about the actual level of evidence for each of the rules. So for the foot rule, it has level two evidence. That means it is accurate, but does not have enough evidence to demonstrate a change in patient outcomes. The Ottawa ankle rule has the highest level of evidence, level one evidence, which means it's accurate and can impact decision-making outcomes and cost. The Ottawa knee rule has level two evidence again, which again means it's accurate, but there's not enough evidence to demonstrate that it will have an effect on patient outcomes. The Ottawa rules are a great thing to know more about, both for tests and for clinical practice. This is a great thing to include in your presentation to your attending whenever you're working up a patient with a lower extremity injury, because it makes it look like you really thought through your patient's care and have good reasoning for your decision making. So this is definitely something you should commit some time to. There are definitely ways you can uh, get access to this while you're on your clinical rotations, like through MD Calc or online. But these are the resources I used and uh, I found them really helpful. If you wanna learn more about this and how these rules came about, these are a great place to start. As always, thanks for listening.